spirals, helixes, and cycloids. In this video, we'll look at some paths of action that are related to circular arcs. Let's start with spirals. A spiral is just a circular arc with a radius that's either increasing, spiraling out, or decreasing, spiraling in. There are many types of spirals, depending on how the radius changes as you go around the circle. The logarithmic spiral, shown here, is a common type of spiral, but there are others. Let's see an example of a path of action that's a spiral. We'll tie a string to a matchbook and tie the other end to a heavy watch. The string is draped over a rod and then we let go of the matchbook. Keep an eye on the matchbook. The action is quick, so this was filmed in slow motion. The wristwatch falls, pulling the string. The matchbook also falls and rapidly accelerates as the string shortens. The matchbook goes fast and it wraps itself around the rod, stopping the falling watch. As I mentioned before, the path of action of the matchbook is a spiral. That demonstration shows that if the radius decreases by pulling an object inward, then the revolutions per second increases and also the speed increases. A similar example is the path of action for the hand of a spinning skater or the foot of a diver going into a tuck. I can demonstrate this by standing on a rotating platform while holding hand weights. Pulling the weights inward makes me spin faster. Let's watch. Notice that I spin faster when the weights come inward and spin slower when I bring the weights back out. The increased speed feels as if it comes from an apparent force called the Coriolis force. This Coriolis force pushes me whenever I move the weights while I'm spinning. We'll see more of this Coriolis force and its cousin, the centrifugal force, in some of the other videos. Now let's look at a different type of motion. A tether ball also has a spiral path of action, but the timing and spacings are different. For the tether ball, it spirals inward with constant speed. The difference is that if the radius decreases without pulling the object inward, then the revolutions per minute still increase due to the shrinking radius, yet the speed and the spacings stays constant. Another way to understand this is to realize that the, that the tether ball doesn't gain energy as it wraps around. But the best way to understand any type of motion is to watch it carefully and be observant of these kinds of details. A helix is similar to a spiral, but instead of the radius changing, the center of the circle moves perpendicular to the circle. An airplane doing a barrel roll is an example of a path of action that's a helix. Spinning fluids form vortices and the path of action for the moving fluid is often a spiral helix. Examples include w water draining down a hole and air moving in a tornado. Another curve that's related to circular arcs is the cycloid. A cycloid is the path of action for a point on the rim of a rolling wheel. The cycloid resembles a half circle or a half ellipse, but mathematically, 
it's actually a different shape. Motion with a cycle often has secondary paths of action that are variants of circular arcs. Watch the path of action of my left foot, the green diamonds, and my right hand, the blue circles. The forward motion of the body combined with the swinging motion of the arms and legs produce paths of action that are similar to a distorted cycloid. In the anim animator's survival kit, Richard Williams points out this path of action for the motion of the ankle. So in summary, a spiral is a circular arc with a radius that's either increasing or decreasing. If an object is pulled inward, then the spinning motion accelerates by the Coriolis force. A helix is circular motion with the center of the circle moving perpendicular to the circle. A cycloid is the path of action for a point on the rim of a rolling wheel. And finally, for motion with a cycle, as in a walk, some paths of action are variations of circular arcs. Whenever you see motion with a cycle, try to pick out the resulting path of action. An important one that we've not yet discussed is the sinusoidal motion of waves. But that we'll have to wait for another time. See you then.